Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and uh, we're going to be talking about Planet X. And I know it seems kind of odd. I got I'm talking about Planet X, and yet at the same time, I've got a website up here uh, showing Atlantis. And this is actually a map uh, that was discovered in ancient Egypt, part of the hieroglyphics, one of the Egyptian maps there showing Atlantis. And actually, if you flip the map over, then it's actually correct in, uh, I guess what you'd say, let me see if I can find the right place here to be able to show you. This being the area there in the Bermuda Triangle where they believe Atlantis actually is under the ocean there. Um, you know, it's kind of funny though. If you flip the map over, they say, then it's actually correct. Could it be because when Atlantis went under the ocean there that it was actually the Earth flipped itself? Very much like what is believed uh, believed that's going to happen here when Planet X comes through once again. Planet X, Nibiru, whatever you want to call it, Nemesis, so many different names that it's given there. Uh, and maybe that Nemesis, I don't, I, I, I don't want to say the wrong thing as well, right? But anyway, that's the map right there. Like I said, if you flip that over, that, that would uh, really uh, raise some interesting uh, thoughts there. This is Kircher's map, uh, which depicts Atlantis, and he was a, uh, I may even have a, a, a article up here about him. I don't remember if I kept it up there or not. Maybe not. Uh, he was a Catholic uh, Jesuit, I believe, or monk, one or the other, I forget which one now, that did a lot of work on Egyptian hieroglyphics. And while he was down in Egypt, he actually found this map that was on leather that had been drawn there of Atlantis. And what's interesting though, a lot there's a lot of scholars that say that Atlantis sunk some 9,000 years uh, uh, BC, or 9,000 years ago, I should say, actually not 9,000 BC, but 7,000 BC, I guess what you would actually say. But I am under the belief that that is all false and that actually Atlantis sunk either during the time of Noah uh, when the great flood took place, or it could have sunk during the times of Moses. And I would actually uh, be more willing to argue during the time of Moses when he was delivering the children of Israel out of Egypt in the Exodus story. So before coming on and doing this broadcast, I decided to do a little research in the Russian language over on Yandex just to see if anybody had ever that kind of inclination as well. And I was amazed. I actually found a scholar, uh, I think he's an Egyptologist as well, that actually argues that the dating that they gave was completely erroneous. And I know they based it on uh, Plato's writings, but, uh, and, and, and I found more than one witness on that, that Plato actually had multiplied the years by 10. And so in both cases, both uh, scholars are arguing that the actual going down of Atlantis happened somewhere between 1500 BC and 2600 BC, which would either put it in either of the categories of the Andalusian destruction or the Exodus story there, which in both cases, according to the Colburn document, is actually the passing of planet X. And one of the big things that I argue because of the intel that I'd received some time back there, is that Planet X actually travels in the ether. It's in another dimension. And in fact, in one of the meetings that I had, I actually asked the question, uh, we were actually discussing where Mike from around the world, when Begley asked him the question I asked him to ask him, does Planet X travel in the ether? He answered it in such a way that I realized no one was going to get his answer. Mm -hmm. He says, well, let me put it to you this way. In the ether, I th if I remember right, I think he says uh, a, a one cubic meter or one mile or one kilometer's worth of the ether, there's more energy in that than there is in what we could power in a year on the earth. And he said they're using CERN to try to tap into that energy. Well, what was Mike really saying? What Mike was really saying is that yes, CERN can open up a portal and by tapping into that energy will bring that binary system in. Now, we already know it's near where we're at. And if I could kind of maybe illustrate a depiction for you, Look at it like this here. It's like a parallel universe. Side by side, 
our universe is moving along here and on the other side in between there you have the you have the ether and by the way the ether is all around you it's not like the ether is just up there in outer space somewhere no it's everywhere around you in the room where i'm at the ether is here the ether is the is what holds or what separates dimensions from one another in other words if a person dies and their soul leaves their body they go they cross the ether or maybe they go into the ether however that is but they're going into another dimension and that ether is what prevents us from being able to see them but in some cases our our dimensions begin to cross one another like in the case of spaceships and things like that they talk about the one out in las vegas now i really have been convinced that that was more fake but the more i hear about it um, I've tried to check in with some, some people I know that would have greater knowledge on this that seem to indicate that, yes, it was real. Uh, in fact, today, uh, Elizabeth, who works with us there, said that they were showing um, the, the image that was behind the tractor, and it kind of looked like an elephant face a little bit. Not that it had a trunk or anything, but kind of like an elephant face. When I heard that, I do know that when um, you're dealing with uh, this case where and this goes back to the time when uh, I was talking about uh, Ra, the sun god alien, along with the his representative was one of those undersea aliens. That, and it is kind of like an elephant looking face a little bit, but it's because they have gills. So it's like the skin flaps down and they're able to breathe underwater and they can breathe oxygen as well. So that really caught my attention when I heard that. And I don't want to get sidetracked off of that. But really what I was trying to bring out, though, is whether you're dealing with underwater uh, uh, UFOs where they, they go in, they, they hit the water, the, the water is not splashing or anything like that. What is it? It's parallel universe, I believe, is what you're looking at. We've actually got video footage where alien aircraft will come down, and I've actually seen uh, the photos and stuff. I, we shared that in one of the interviews I did with the sister out in California, and she may be listening tonight. God bless you, sister. She shows where the craft comes down, but then it changes form right when it hits that mountaintop. And if I remember right, it actually goes into the mountain, just disappears. What, what, what is this? Again, it's parallel universe is what it is. And so in this case here, we, those demons, those fallen angels, they know the timing of when Planet X is going to be coming back through in its orbit where it will parallel our universe as well. And what it does is it begins to affect our own solar system because, as the way it's put to me, it literally travels right in the edge of the ether in another dimension parallel to ours. And that effects of this planet are so great in its binary system that it begins to affect everything in our solar system. Our sun is being affected. We are having these massive uh, ejections, things like that. Now, I know people are showing all kinds of pictures, and they're showing, they say, this is Planet X out there. Well, we've been seeing this for years now. You go back 2015, you see pictures. This is, a, this is the second, this is the failed dwarf star. It's Planet X. Uh, 2019, 2018. I mean, everywhere you look, I'm always seeing pictures of the new Planet X that's coming through. So... I don't really necessarily buy all of that, but I do know that it does, as it's been told to me, it does occasionally cross into our own uh, side of the ether, and then it goes back out again. And it's back and forth is the way it's always been described to me. But now the point I want to make, though, is the fallen angels know when it's coming. In fact, if you look at the Colburn document, it says the wise know when it will return. And I think that it's talking about the fallen angels when it says that. All right. They know when it's going to come back. And so what they do is they begin to advance the civilizations here on the earth so that when it does return, we will get to the technology because they need our help in order to be able to open up that dimension, open up that portal that allows this system to come in. Now, the odd thing is, is I'm beginning to be more persuaded after I did the video earlier today. Many of you may have already saw it, where I talked about 
uh, Malachi's prophecy that the son of righteousness arises with healing in his wings. Now, what is really the healing then? If the son of righteousness is actually the judgment of a binary system that brings judgment on the earth, why would we call that healing in its wings or healing in his wings? Because in this case here, it bring it wipes off and cleanses the earth of sin and all the evildoers. In fact, in the Egyptian documents that I've studied, I've shared that with you before, how that one dimension will collapse upon the other and the archons will begin to weep and mourn for those uh, humans that they had made. Now, we're not talking about Christians. We're talking about their hybrid Nephilim children that they have made. Yeah, they're going to weep and mourn for that because we find in that writing there that judgment is being brought in upon them. So I began to decide, to. I knew that the Colbrin document has a lot of information about Planet X. They call it the Destroyer. So I decided to look to see, is there any references possibly of, of what I'm speaking about that a dimension or a portal is opened up that brings this system through? And oddly enough, I believe that it describes exactly that. Now I'm going to go back here to Atlantis here in just a moment and share some things with you, including this, uh, this scholar that also believes it's a parallel timing of that of the Exodus story. But before I do, let's take a look at some of those uh, ancient documents there. Here is one right here. This is from the Colburn document. And I forget exactly how old this is, but uh, I know they discovered, I think, I think it was in the library of Valley, uh, no, it was in... Uh, there was a fire in, I believe it was Britain, and this is one of the books that had survived that they brought out that had not been talked about in many, many years. So it is old. It's not like, it's not like thousands of years old, but it is old as far as from what we know. Uh, but anyway, it says, uh, then with the dawning of men saw an awesome sight. There riding on a great black rolling cloud came the destroyer, newly released from the confines of the sky vaults. And she raged about the heavens for it was her day of judgment. All right. The beast with her opened his mouth and belched forth fire, hot stones and vile smoke. It covered the whole sky above the meeting place of earth and heaven could no longer be seen. In the evening, the places of the stars were changed. They rolled across the sky to new stations. Then floodwaters came. Now this is during the Andalusian destruction. But I thought it was interesting how it mentions that. Came the destroyer newly released from the confines of the sky vaults. Now, there's other ones as well, like this one here. Um, this one is in GL, GLN 428. The swelling water swept up to the mountain tops and filled the valleys. They did not rise like water poured into a bowl, but came in great surging torrents. But when the torment quietened and waters became still, they stood no more than three cubits above the earth. The destroyer passed away into the fastness of heaven. And the word fastness there is like a hidden place that it went to. Could that hidden place actually be another dimension? Well, that's kind of like what my thought was on this here, right? So... Let's see. All right. That was Edward Hudos. We'll go, jump out of that. Let's go back this way here to the right. Um, I think this is another one. I just have to blow it up so I can see it. In old times, there were spawned great monsters and beasts. Okay. Now, that was actually what happened as a result of these this system here coming through. We talked about that earlier today. Uh, this one here, and I actually did the video, uh, some of the videos I did earlier today based on this, but I, for the sake of bringing out some of this information, let's look at this one again. Men, men forget the day of the destroyer. Only the wise know where it went and that it will return in its appointed hour. There you go right there. Remember what I just said to you? Only the wise. See, only the wise know where it went and that it will return at its appointed hour. So my argument is, is that the fallen angels, they know where it's at, when it's coming. And so they help mankind to achieve exactly that. Or, or maybe, maybe it's the father and his angels. I, I don't know which one. Because granted, in the case of Moses, the children of Egypt, there had to be judgment brought upon the pharaohs of Egypt because they were keeping in bondage the children of Israel. And God wanted them free. 
Could he have given the Atlanteans the technology of that of a Hadron Collider? Because as I've been told already, it is CERN. It is a Hadron Collider. And we have more than one. We have multiple of these things on the Earth there. And they are all up and operational. And I clearly was told that that is what's going to open up the dimension so that this system can come in at the appointed time. And then it will bring in the destroyer. It'll bring in this planet X. It'll bring in the very system that brings about a judgment upon the earth. And that's what we had happen then. It raged across the heaven in the days of wrath. And this was its likeness. It was a billowing cloud of smoke enwrapped in a ruddy glow, not distinguishable in joint or limb. Its mouth was an abyss from which came flame, smoke, and hot cinders. When ages pass, certain laws operate upon the stars and the heavens. Their ways change. There is movement and restlessness there are no longer constant and great light appears readily uh, readily in the skies notice that when age pass certain laws operate upon the stars and in the heavens their ways change there is movement and restlessness that's kind of like an indicator you know it's getting close when the blood drops upon the earth destroyer will appear and mountains will open up and belch forth fire and ashes Trees will be destroyed and all living things engulfed. Waters will be swallowed up by the land and seas will boil. I mean, that stuff seems unimaginable to even happen. But yet at the same time right now, what are we seeing every day? Earthquakes. Seeing them on a seven is no big deal anymore. You're going to see them on eights and nines on a constant basis very soon. In fact, Yellowstone, I've already been told, is at a heightened state of emergency of erupting. The earth is beginning to swell and move around. And yet in one of these uh, writings here in the, uh, when you read the Colburn document, it talks about that the earth was like a, 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 some kind of rust, roasted nut. It gets so hot internally that it begins to crack up. And that's what's happening even now. We're starting to heat up. And this, of course, the system affects our sun. The sun, in turn, shoots out all of these uh, this massive radiation. We're getting these solar winds. I mean, I'm here down in Florida, and I'm telling you something, friends. We had storms the last couple of days here, and, and I grew up near this area here. Or Also, I lived in Pensacola for many, many years as well. Uh, I lived in Castleberry, Alabama, Uriah, Alabama. I was a little boy and stuff growing up. And... I've seen all kinds of storms. I've all seen all kinds of lightning. But I'm going to tell you something. The storms here now, and those of you that might be from this area, you tell me if it's not weird to you as well. I'm talking about like last night, the lightning was non-stop. The thunder was non-stop. It wasn't like boom, a few minutes later, another one, boom. No, it's boom, 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 boom. And the, light, the night sky is like almost lit up non-stop. Like it's daytime. I, honestly, friends, listen, I'm 58 years old, soon to be 59. I have never in my life seen anything like that in this area. When I was struck by lightning back many, many years ago, uh, it was a day where we were getting a lot of lightning, but it was boom. And then a few minutes later, boom again. And a few minutes later, boom again. And I thought that was nuts. It's insane now. So the weather patterns are changing. Uh, now they're talking about hailstones and everything. Remember I told you this. What did I tell you? I said you're going to see hypercanes. And they actually had one that could have easily been uh, called a hyper typhoon that hit India earlier uh, this year already where the winds reached 175 miles an hour sustained. What's going to happen this summer? Who knows? I told you about the inline winds that we would see. Uh, this I told you, what, two, three years ago? We'd see over 100 miles an hour going up through the Midwest and stuff, and we've seen it. While I was gone in Tennessee, my day, or the caretaker that I have, she said to me, she said, Steve, she says, every time you leave, we have the worst storms you've ever seen. We had four tornadoes hit. And I live in an area where people just don't talk. They don't talk. They, even my neighbor, Mike, he's lived there his whole life. He said, you don't hardly ever see a tornado around here. And they actually sent me a picture of one of them. Four of them. Right there in Sunbright, Tennessee. 
four. Can you imagine that? And even here in the South, I mean, yes, you do get some big tornadoes up in Mississippi and Alabama and stuff, but I'm talking about, I think not long ago we had a Cat 5 hit Mississippi. I'm, I, I think historically it has happened before, but that's just not normal. Anyway, the heavens will burn brightly and redly. There will be a copper hue over the face of the land, followed by a day of darkness. A new moon will appear and break up and fall. The people will scatter in madness. They will hear the trumpet and battle cry of the destroyer and will seek refuge within dens in the earth. Speaking of the moon, we got some, uh, some not so friendly folks up there right now, but they seem to think they can mitigate the situation. <laughs> That's another one for Patreon, right? Terror will eat away their hearts and their courage will flow from them. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. Uh, verse 6 here. The people will scatter in madness. They will hear the trumpet of battle cry of the destroyer and will seek refuge within dens in the earth. It actually causes like a trumpet type of sound as it's coming through. Terror will eat away their hearts and their courage will flow from them like water from a broken pitcher. They will be eaten up with the flames of wrath and consumed by the breath of the destroyer. Thus it was in the days of the heavenly wrath, which have gone, and thus it will be in the days of doom when it comes again. The times of its coming and going are known unto the wise. These are the signs in the time which shall precede the destroyer's return, and a hundred and ten generations shall pass in the west, and nations shall rise and fall. Men will fly in the air as birds and swim in the seas as fishes. Men will walk, will talk peace one with another. Hypocrisy, deceit shall have their day. Women will be as men and men as women. Possession, a passion will be a plaything of man. Now I get into this other stuff here in the bottom, but you will have to go to Israeli News Live, iConnectFX.com to see that video there. That is a shocker in itself. All right. Let's see if I got some more here. This one here I actually did already. Uh, let me just see what we had on this one. I don't recall. Uh, when the heavens shall be torn apart and the skies rent in twain in the days when children will turn gray-headed. All right, this is uh, 41. O sentinels of the universe who watch for the destroyer, how long will you, how long will your enduring vigil last? O mortal men who wait without understanding, where will you hide yourselves in the dread days of doom when the heavens shall be torn apart and skies rent in twain in the days when children will turn gray-headed? It seems like there was a biblical scripture about children being gray-headed, but maybe I'm wrong on that. I don't recall right now, or maybe I've seen it in another document that I read. But I know I've seen it somewhere, and I just don't recall. Uh, this is the thing which will be seen. This is the terror your eyes will behold. This is the form of the destruction that will rush upon you. There will be a great body of fire, the glowing head with many mouths and eyes ever. Um, this one here, let's see. Uh, let's see, uh, doom shape called the destroyer. It appeared in the days long gone by in olden times. It thus describes in the old records, few of which remain. It is said that when it appears in the heavens above, earth splits open from the heat like a nut roasted before the fire. Then flames shoot up through the surface and leap about like fiery f uh, fiends upon b uh, black blood. The moisture inside the land is all dried up. The pastures, cultivated places are consumed in flames. They and all the trees become white ashes. So, I mean, <laughs> it just go on and on and on. But the point that I, that I want to bring out, though, is that that opening up using CERN, that technology. Now, I want to go back with you here about the Atlantis. I'd gotten information quite some time back here about Atlantis, and we were talking about it one time before. And I was told that there is, that Atlantis had the technology very similar to that of CERN. And with that technology, they uh, were convinced by these fallen angels to open up a portal. That's what brought it in, and that's what caused the sinking of Atlantis, the destruction of their city and everything as a result. Now, that made me want to dig deeper because it made me wonder if Egypt and Atlantis didn't have some type of bilateral relationship or 
uh, of some sort, right? And then of course we find that where Atlantis is in a Bermuda Triangle, we also have, there are pyramids down there. And, uh, and we know that these pyramids are interconnected on the earth, the pyramids of Egypt. There's even Sphinx down there as well. Another interesting aspect, just like the Black Pyramid up under Alaska. Now, with that being stated, and also knowing the anomalies of the Bermuda Triangle, how that we had this, what was it, uh, one time I saw, I think it was the History Channel, they were showing uh, these pilots that flew out, they were on a training mission going off the coast of Florida over the Bermuda Triangle. The next thing you know, it's like they caught some type of time warp and they go from one location that should have taken them several hours where within just minutes, they're at the other side of that tunnel, so to speak. All kinds of crazy things happen in the Bermuda Triangle. I believe it's because it is remini, remini, uh, uh, lingering effects of them opening that portal back 1,500 years before Christ ever came on the earth. That's my argument. Now, in carrying on, like I said, to show you this is actually in the Russian language. I just changed it over on the live journal into the English language here. Moses and the tsunami from the drowned Atlantis. Uh, Morozov Alexander uh, Gavrilovich is the one that wrote this article here. Uh, and, uh, and like I said, a very interesting, he writes, says here, uh, and I'll just read some of the highlighted places here. And for centuries before the birth of Christ, Plato in his dialogues described a huge island. It was actually Plato. I think I called it a different name earlier, so I apologize for that. That had gone as a result of some catastrophe to the bottom of the sea about 9,000 years before. And about, about the highly developed civilization of the Atlanteans that died on this island. Archaeologists are very skeptical about Plato's figures, for they know that 9,000 years before Plato, people were just beginning to master the basics of the agricultural and animal husbandry. Therefore, the following point of view has now become quite widespread. A. Plato increased all the numerical parameters for Atlantis by 10 times, he notes. Taking into account this factor, the lost Atlantis as the island of Santorian, the Aegean Sea on which powerful volcanic eruptions occurred approximately nine to ten centuries before Plato. Immediately before the eruption of the Minoan civilization flourished on the island of Crete located to the south, the colony of which was possibly exploded Centaurian and prosperity of the Minoan civilization also stopped at about nine to ten centuries before Plato. So the author here is arguing this. He even goes so far as to say that the pillar of day mentioned in the Bible, he compares it to the Exodus here, he said mentioned in the Old Testament is the ejection of ash from the vent of the volcanic into the lower layers of the stratosphere. The height of such an ejection is quite sufficient for observation from the coast of Egypt. Now, I don't know if I can agree with him on some of these thoughts that he has here, but they are noteworthy nonetheless. And that's why I actually highlighted them. Uh, he also talks about the parting of the waters of the sea. Now, that would also depend on where the crossing was. Uh, he, he believes that it was because the tidal wave that struck, uh, uh, that actually struck uh, Atlantis, and therefore the receding waters that would be against Egypt would have been moved away, and that would have given the children of Israel a chance to cross over. In my opinion, though, that's not correct because that would have to put the crossing somewhere along the Mediterranean or somewhere in the Nile River or something to that effect there, which we clearly know from Ron Wyatt's work that he did there that the the true crossing uh, was actually not uh, not in the area there, but rather uh, it was uh, at Nueva Beach there. And I think I still have, let's see if I got that somewhere on here. Um, it looks like I don't have that. I thought I did. Here we go. Yeah, we do. The wave of beach right here. And that would be the Gulf of Aquaba. So there's no way that the Gulf of Aquaba could have been drained out by a tsunami. But nonetheless, Moses, according to the Colburn document, when it does talk about him and clearly another individual, which would have been Aaron, his brother, 
they were able to prophesy of the events of everything that happened before it happened and not even the the great uh, 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 magicians of Egypt knew about those things that were going to happen. And we do see the wadi here that Ron talks about, the Nueva Beach, big enough to be able to have as many of the Israelites as they uh, depicted that left Egypt. And of course, there is a sandbar that goes across there. And if you remove that water, it's about 240 feet down, uh, that would give them the ability to cross over on dry ground because on either side, it plunges like a thousand feet in either direction. Now, I've actually found on the opposite side, looking at, and I, and I did this through satellite photo, photo photography, and I did this long years ago because I was looking at one of the pictures that was taken by Ron Wyatt's late wife, uh, um, uh, Mary Lou Wyatt, and Mary Lou had taken a picture and the mountain directly due east of Nueva Beach had a top that was totally burnt. Much like of what they showed down at Mount Sinai over in uh, Saudi Arabia, being the mountain is burnt there as well. My argument was, though, that God somehow or another, however this was, came down and that's where that wind was created that caused that water to part. But again, could it be from the phenomena of the passing of Planet X as the Colburn document does clearly uh, identify that that is what caused all these phenomena in the first place? I don't know. Maybe. But we do know one thing. Moses knew in advance every single thing that was going to happen. That was part of what he did as a prophet. He prophesied. And yet at the same time, he takes his rod and sticks it in the water and turns the water to blood, but not only the river of the Egypt, but also all the waters around there. And yet we know that when planet X comes through, the iron-based planet will turn the waters to what appears to be like a blood-like color. And it does contaminate the water. And so it could have been for a fact that Moses, knowing by the hand of Almighty God that was going to happen, that he could prophesy, and at the very moment his rod would strike the water, that water would change at that very moment. And I'm not trying to diminish any of the miracles or anything like that, but clearly fire comes down out of heaven. We have a, a meteorite storm and everything, everything that's associated with, with this binary system and truly it appears to be that's going to bring the judgment of malachi chapter 4 into existence in this day that we're living in now so this is why i begin to look at this and compare the two well like i said uh, i wasn't the only one that come up with that kind of idea about atlantis now this was just i just typed it in in the russian language it translated it into english and this guy here also, now he's not a scholar or anything, but he actually brings up a very similar thought that I had. Does the fate of Atlantis await Europe after the launch of the Large Hydrant Collider? History repeats itself. I submit a version. 10,000 years ago, or in this case we know now that it was only roughly about 3,500 years ago, the Atlantean civilization built something similar and launched it as a result Atlantis fell into the bottom of the ocean or maybe even went into another dimension. And its place, the Bermuda Triangle, remained performing the same actions to this day. Well, like I said, I wasn't the only guy running around thinking these things. And that's what I found fascinating, uh, to say the least there. Uh, now, I this here, I, don't, I haven't read the article on this. So I don't even know what's written there. I just was looking at the picture so I can share that with you guys. Um, anyway, there, I, I thought that would be interesting for you. I wanted to share that here over on our Patreon channel. Uh, I, I would imagine though eventually I will share this over on Israeli News Live, but I want you guys to be able to, to see this information. I am just blown away by it, and I hope it's a, it's a real blessing to you. And I do want to thank you, your faithfulness, and supporting our Patreon channel because you make the difference for us that we can do this type of work. God bless you. Have a great night. Uh, I'm hoping to do something uh, tomorrow as well, but we'll see. And I still got other videos I'm still wanting to put out. So like I said, I'm on a marathon tonight. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live.